And a happy Thursday evening to you. It's exciting to be able to be with you here live on the internet. The internet. The internet is so, it's miraculous, isn't it, Brian? Wouldn't you say that, would you call it miraculous? I think it's a, it's a small M mir miracle, David. Like, <laughs> like 40 years ago, people would say, you're, you're lying to me. This could never happen. So, so for them, they would have gone big M miracle. But for us, we know there are, see, like yeah. that, like that. Yeah. But uh, for us, it's, it's good. It's a good thing. <laughs> It is a good thing. It's a good thing. I mean, it's helpful for internet programming, like to be able to do a a a, a high quality Freedom House TV talk show like this. Uh, previously, we would have had to have a studio. We would have had to leave the house, and I mean, I mean, not during a pandemic. Heavens no! Like, like this. This has been this has been quite something, you know. Like this is right. This is good. You're right, Dave. Can I ask a dumb question? Oh, please. Have we gone live? We are live. It says it says oh so it's been live for two minutes and forty six seconds. I didn't know. Yes, if it was, sir. I don't know if it was counting down or up. It seems like it's going up. So I told you I could ask a dumb question. So <laughs> you you are you're so confused by the numbers. That's that, that's okay. I don't. That's know all right. We got before. <laughs> Doug Farron says it works better with a live audience, as they say. That's oh, right, Doug. Lovely. Buddy, I love I love Doug's drop ins. Doug I love Doug's awesome. drop ins. See, my That's thing right. is it's going live in like a minute now. I don't understand. Oh, oh. Parents says it works See, look. better with a live audience, as they say. That's right, Doug. Buddy, I yeah. love, I love it's live. live. It's live. Angie says hello. Angie. Right. Hello, Angie. Hello, Patrick. Hey, you know who else uh, wants to say hello? We've got uh, somebody's. We've got somebody in the green room. We've got somebody in Laura, the green room Laura. just waiting to be able to come out. Laura. No, we got no Laura. We got a. We got a Jacob. Oh, yeah, Cole. He's walking. He's oh, walking. Man, is this like a horror movie? I'm moving to the Blair internet. He's, he's walking through the Loot Dozwa Castle look in search of a stronger Wi Fi signal. Ah, yeah. oh, beautiful. He's yes, seated. This is better. Yes. There he is. Jacob, hello. There's the real star. Hey, it's Elijah. Hi, hey, buddy. Say hi. It's good to see you, dude. You know, with the uh, with the oh. the different the different things going on, you don't see each other all that much anymore. But this is awesome. We got Elijah and Jacob. Elijah, can you provide us with some commentary about the U.S. elections, please? Jacob, please just let the boy talk. Can you say, can yeah. you say two. Can you say two. <laughs> and eight. Phil Phil Morace is excited to see his nephew. Yes. Yes, very nice, very nice. Oh, well, no, hey, no. uh, yeah, totally. That's see, that's pretty decent enough. I mean, it's better than I've heard so far on the TV for sure. I'm, we're killing uh, Kirsten in the background. What's this? Uh, this is good material. Is good material. <laughs> if you're watching, uh, First, our apologies. Second, uh, make sure that you uh, uh, make a comment. We'd love to be able to say hi and that sort of thing. Uh, Brian, two hey, weeks man. ago, two weeks ago, we talked about this. You said that the century belongs to dreamers and strategists and risk takers. And uh, and this week, we jumped into a neat topic um, about the uh, Reformation. It was uh, Reformation Sunday. And... Um, uh, you said Reformation is all the church with all the gospel going to all the city. And we're going to chat a little bit about that uh, tonight. So if you're watching, love to be able to hear your thoughts on it. But years ago, Brian, I remember, um, and you referenced it, um, revivals used to be something that you you studied in school and, and loved it. But when did you hit that mark where you're like, it's got to be about more than just what we traditionally call revival? It's got to be about reformation. When did you hit that mark? Yeah, I would say I would say probably mid nineties. It was starting to come come into kind of forbearance. I would say, but I would say really when uh, it became oh this is really it is when I read Ed Savos's book that none should perish. So uh, as you said, my story would be kind of through my teen years into Bob College. They have a course of Bible college revivals and wondering whether God could send a major move to him. And then moving from there to from revival to reformation because revival is a 
is a move of God that comes and stirs up the church, but God wants to actually change the fabric of society. And that's what I would say is reformation. Jake, you're a uh, you're a church nut. Like you're you're someone that you you love thinking about the church. And uh, Jake is uh, a part of our youth ministry um, here at Freedom House, an important part of our of our house. What what does Reformation mean to you? The idea of of, of Reformation. What's that kind of stuff mean to you? Um, I think primarily it means change. Like you have to change. You know. Some things have to die, and and new things have to be be created, right? Um, I think of there's a there's an old sermon called uh, something in a grain of wheat uh, by Major Ian Thomas. I think he was a Salvation Army uh, hmm. preacher, and and the whole point of the sermon is that you have you have to die in order to live. Unless the grain of wheat falls to and dies, um, it cannot it can't have new life. And I think um, oftentimes we can we can get stuck in old things, not and not let them die, and to have uh, a rebirth, you know, plant the new seed and give it space to to grow and live. Brian, when you when you talked about this Sunday, Reformation is all the church with all the gospel uh, going to all the city. One of the things that you referenced was the idea of uh, the social gospel and spiritual gospel, uh, that that the kingdom is both. And um, I remember um, like 15-ish years ago when, um, when there was um, a whole lot of, you know, very, very hipster social gospel uh, movements um, uh, popping up. And there really seemed to be I, a high degree of tension between the people that were out there who were really doing the work, who were really on the ground, really caring, and and this high degree of tension between that and those who were far more spiritual, who were the hoppers, the prayers, the the, the prophets, and and that sort of thing. And I mean, we we sort of joke about it, but it's it's legit, right? Like this is a. I remember being in in prayer meetings with with you with with different pray, even within different prayer movements some that focus very heavily on on social gospel stuff out and some that were like man you get the prophecy of the of wheels within wheels and buddy you got yourself a meeting and there was a, there were times where we even had to be like you know blessed are the peacemakers between people who are very very similar this is a real thing isn't it 100% and and I don't think it's gone by any means I was in a meeting this week with this dilemma <laughs> of of the ones that we're going to pray and seek God's face and we're going to prophesy and all the gifts of the spirit have to be resident. And we, we're going to identify the Jezebel spirit and bind her. And well, that's fantastic. Uh, maybe you should go feed somebody that's hungry. So, and, and to me, it's, again, it's going to be both, right? Like how do you, how do you walk in step with the spirit and all the gifts, we believe all the gifts are for today. So they're important. It's important to, to walk in hearing God and obeying and, live when you live that in a church is prophetic but uh but being the social gospel if you want to define it simply as what jesus said you know feed the hungry clothe the naked like practical needs and and we have for years and still do take a side well i'm going to meet practical needs or i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to bombard the heavens with my prayer i think we need to do both i think we we can't we can't do anything unless god shows up God has to show up, and if not, we're just we're feeding a couple people, and and that's good. We don't want them hungry, but how do you how do you partner? How do you bring that Holy Spirit maniac along with? Let's do the practical stuff too. Jake, this is something that I've watched in you grow over the years, right? Because you you've got you've got um, a different church background than 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 Brian or I, and I've watched different parts of both sides of these things. Uh, come alive in you over the years when we met you like this the holy spirit stuff you were like okie dokie all, all, all <laughs> yeah. but i mean i'm gonna take a pat but but you you've also always been someone that you've done stuff on on the streets with people how do you how do you balance that and, and how do you value both things like the spiritual part of christianity and the social part so um it's it's actually really interesting because that's kind of my goal so for anybody who doesn't know, I'm, I just started my 
Bachelor of Social Work um, at Laurier. And so like right now, uh, you're, we're like entrenched in the issues. Like we're studying the issues, we're studying the, the things people are dealing with. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. And just today I was outside with Elijah, we were praying, well, we were playing and I'm like, I'm looking around and, and God is just reminding me of how, how powerful he is. While at the same time, a lot of what I'm thinking is like, how, how do we miss some of these things that are going on? Like some of the things that are happening inside Canada are, are just awful. And it, it amazes me that th these are things that are allowed to still happen. And yet at the same time, God is reminding me like, humans are sinful so bad things happen and, and we need my power in the earth right and so um it's it's really hard to balance some days I, i'm exhausted from from the stress of trying to figure things out and how do we solve things and and other and god has really been reminding me like you need my presence and you need my power this stuff gets solved by by his presence and his power mm. So good. Um, and, and I think, I, I guess for me, uh, I, I always have to remember and check myself and, re and I want to remind myself that just because I'm doing one of those two things today and somebody else isn't that they're not in the wrong, right? <laughs> like, so I, I remember there being a night, um, what a, a flip and Friday night, Brian, I mean, you and I, uh, and, and Jake's done, done quite a bit of it with us as well, but we, we did this for, I mean, almost every Friday night that we didn't freeze our fingers off for a decade. And, and I, I remember, I remember there was a, a, a service going on in town and, and I knew that there were some evangelists and they were all excited about stuff. And I remember being out on the street thinking about in my mind and i'm like i'm even you know when you play out arguments with people in your car and you like role play and go and then they were gonna say this and then i'll say this right and i'm up in my mind i'm like i could hear at the service going oh we just pray for the people on the street and i'm like but they're right here like you just go up there and they're right here right and but God corrected me and reminded me that we absolutely need both. You know, when we were doing uh, uh, pre uh, pre quarantine, when when we were uh, doing our regular fusions and uh, worship nights and prayer nights, some of my favorite ever Tuesdays were nights where I wasn't even there because I had a meeting in a city and I knew that the people in the church were praying for God to be able to do things. And I'm like, those meetings were the greatest because, you know, the generators go and prayer is happening. The spirit stuff is happening combined with the practical. If we can figure out a way to be able to make these two elements of our faith happen, that is superpower, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, for sure. And and I think everyone's, everyone's uh, wired, depending on your spiritual gifts or even your natural abilities, you're wired towards one or the other. Very few people are going, I am going to be directly in the middle and I'm going to go for both. So, so if you're wired more towards the, the prayer and the worship, then that's great. There's a good chance you're called to that. And that's fantastic. Uh, I, I loved it when people that were called to that would come and serve on the street as well, because they were yeah. inten intentionally like, you know, stretching their, their faith to go, I'll do that. And, and then the other way around, like the people that are actually, you know, the, the Marthas that just want to serve and it's all good. I love when they do that and they're in a, their wheelhouse, but, but then when they stretch them, themselves to go, all right, I am going to give somebody a word that I believe is from God today. It's like, it's all really powerful to watch it and, and helping them each grow. And, and because sometimes when you do what's natural to you, you don't have to have faith anymore. And so finding a way to, to always do whatever you do, like whatever, whatever you do is like, you want faith to be kind of the, the important part of that. So finding a way to do that is really important and, and that can happen. If you're watching online, love to hear what your thoughts are. Just drop a comment. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, you make a comment and we'll be able to see it. And we'd love to be able to put your thoughts into the middle of the conversation. Ah, I got about another 10 minutes ish left. Let's throw this out here, Brian. We, this is something uh, that we've talked about quite a lot at Freedom House over the years. Um, but over the next number of weeks, we're going to go back at it a little bit. Um, the idea of, of the seven mountains. And I had someone, uh, when we reintroduced this and started talking, they brought up something like, 
well, where does social work? It was that Jacob was actually someone that asked about where does social work fall under the seven mountains? Because they were trying to figure out, well, I don't think it's any one of these specifically. And while these are all important mountains, you can find the really the, the idea of it is whatever you're called to do is influential inside society. And it certainly hits up a few of the different mountains. They are not hard and fast mountains, although mountains themselves are hard and fast objects, but uh, like these are these are some of the more, different areas: arts and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah. Arts and entertainment, and business, and church, and education, and family, and government, and media. Jake, we'll, we'll go to you first. Are these all? Have these always been areas that you found to be like spiritual things to be able to engage in? Um. I don't know. Or or do you find it? Like I well, I do now, obviously. I think I think for sure now I, I feel that way. Um but you know, I don't know that I was always aware of it. You know, once once I, I was made aware of it and understood kind of the, the concept, it, it makes a lot of sense. But before that you're just kind of like you, you just stick in the church realm. That's where you go. There's not mm. you know, if you're not if you're not so if the people that are in those spaces aren't encouraged that that's that that's a spiritual reality, you're called to that. You have a, an ordination from God to do those things and mm. his power and presence is with you for them. Um, then people won't maybe be aware of it unless they get some supernatural vision from God. Um, they need to be encouraged. I, I was never aware before kind of coming here, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's, Normally, you would think you just stick in the church, and the church does what it does, but that's not really how it works. It's not, you know. I remember a few years ago uh, when you and uh, Kirsten joined us out in California for the Transform Our World Global Conference plug coming up uh, the next week, <laughs> November 11th to 14th um, in San Jose. Uh, or uh, this is this time it's actually in uh, Oxford, Alabama. But since you're in Canada and you can't go there, you can go there on the internet. So you can uh, you register at transformerworld.ca. But uh, Jake, I remember when you and Kirsten joined us to be able to help run the kids program uh, out there in uh, out in uh, San Jose. Now you were uh, sequestered a bit in the in in the kid world, but I remember having chats with you, watching your mind blow up about the incredible kind of people that show up there from all these different areas, and the simply the kind of impact that they're making on the world. What does what does something like, I mean, what does seeing this many people from different um, different disciplines all functioning like this? What did that do in you? What's it do inside of you? Because I know you're a thinker and. Uh, so what's it do inside of you? Well, it's encouraging. Like it's a it's a living testimony that's happening. You know that there there are people in these spaces. There they are actually doing things. You know, oftentimes, you know, we we can get really heady and and just think about stuff like that. That's that's me. Um, but when something's living and active and breathing, like um, like the global conference and and the people inside those areas, like they all have people with them too. They're not the only people engaged in that, you know, God is using them. They're discipling people where they are. And so it's, it's an encouragement and um, I'm trying to think of the word, but it's, it's gone for me right now, but it's, <laughs> it's a, it's an encouragement. It pushes you forward. And um, yeah. Brian, make a note. Uh, Jacob just said that words escaped him. Make a note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, <laughs> why is this important to be able to go back at again? Um, uh, and and I'll you know I'll preface that going, I know that it's important to go back at this, and it's not an again; it's a a continual reminder. Like Jake said, very often people don't either remember it or even know it. But why is this important? This idea of the seven mountains of culture and influencing them. We're always bannering stuff at Freedom House under the kingdom of God. That was Jesus' banner for everything he did under the kingdom of God. And the church is only part of the kingdom. Like your, your two or four or six hours a week or whatever you spend at the church or give to the church ministry, that's, that's not the kingdom. It's part of the kingdom, but the kingdom is everything that happens everywhere. 
So it's really important that people understand that what everyone does everywhere is sacred and really important. So letting people know, and, and going back to what you said, Dave, I don't care what the, the mountains are called. It could be, because we played through the whole thing. Are they mountains or spheres or gates or domains? Doesn't matter. But it, it's just an area of society that is significant to a bulk of people in that in that society. And so these are all important. God calls people to them to serve people and him in those. And I'll tell you, when people can get, uh, when the light goes on for somebody to go, it's not, it's not just the pastor or the missionary that are spiritual. Everything is spiritual. So what I do matters. Now it makes sense what, what Paul said in Colossians, like whatever your hand finds to do, find it with, do it with all your might. Instead of when you're leading worship or maybe a, a service, like everything is spiritual. Everything matters. And uh, I really do have something important to add to the kingdom of God. This is one of the scriptures you used Sunday, Brian, the uh, Romans 1. 16 from not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes to the Jew first and also the Greek the the both the Jew and the Greek uh in uh in in the New Testament is is so so important isn't it like this idea of because these were vastly different folks these were Republicans and Democrats right like <laughs> right like these are there's never been such a great divide I don't know if I've heard that uh, enough over the last few days but I mean hey there's a great divide in almost every culture you look yeah. back right so like this idea of yeah it's for both of you it's for the both of you stop just comparing what's on the end of your to you know anyway there's probably other differences but yeah. but why is this important to the jew and the greek either of you guys i i would say that each culture has something that they're passionate about and they and that they get passionate about so finding a thing that goes yep the kingdom of god speaks to that directly into your heart and mind Yep, that's your culture, the kingdom of God. God's word speaks directly in your heart and mind about that, and that it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, uh, as long as you love me. Wasn't there an old song like that? Sorry. <laughs> so, that would be the Backstreet Boys. Right, right, there you go. Yeah. It doesn't, it it doesn't matter because – oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> it doesn't matter because God's word and his kingdom and his spirit will speak directly to you where you are and, mm -hmm. and almost everyone I speak to, after they've said yes to Jesus or started walking with him, they go, oh, man, I that voice I heard, I've heard that verse for years. I just didn't know it was God. So And they go, oh, that, so that is God speaking to me about the things that are important to me. Which is and, Jake, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, um, anything you throw yourself into and God calls you into, he starts – start speaking to you about it. Like when you started uh, doing your, your, uh, your social courses uh, this year at, at university, uh, I, I would get, I would get daily texts and manuscripts from, from you. Go, and, but <laughs> it, it, it's like, but it would be like, you're there and you said, yes, God, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then he starts speaking to you about something that he put on your heart and you said yes to, but you didn't just say yes. Uh, Brian, you, you, you mentioned on Sunday, you just got, you have to do something like you have to just, actually jump out and so jake when you threw yourself even into into school and go yeah i want to be able to impact social work how did that happen like did or did did god immediately begin to speak to you about some of these different areas as you had said yes and took a step yeah i i would so i would say that i have intentionally kind of going back to the seven mountains things is everywhere i've been i've i've tried to allow god to speak um it's kind of it's a big part of my testimony i got saved from hearing god um it wasn't just um it wasn't just out of service or anything i was in my bedroom and and i was crying out to him and he spoke to me and so it's always been a, been a big piece of of kind of my walk and so going into it was going into i know these like I know these people have expertise. They're they're engaged in in a in a specific work and profession, um, and yeah, I, I need to hear God. I need to know what He says too. And I don't know. I I think it comes back to the to the humble and hungry thing that you you have to allow God to speak in issues. You have to you have to listen. That's been the biggest thing for me is that. You know, a lot of the things we're talking about, um, 
I would say as a conservative and, and the people that I listen to, like nobody's, nobody's, nobody has an open ear to it. And so there's a, there's always been kind of just the hardness in the conversation that I had heard before, but this, this specifically pushed me into this conversation in this specific way. And um, the listening has been really good. It's been, mm. and it, you know, if you don't come to it humbly, you, you can get lost in it. You can get lost with either a hard heart or you can get lost in, um, in the issue itself. And so I, yeah, Interesting. humility is the biggest one. Being able to listen, being able to allow other people's voices to kind of have a space. Hungry yeah. and humble. <laughs> I, I, heard, I heard a statement a, a, a while ago and it, it stuck with me and I don't know who said it, but it was, is you need to understand that everyone you meet knows something you don't know. And it, right. And being able to go, OK, I'm going to I'm going to ask more questions than I'm going to make statements here, because if I can if I can let them know they're important. But also, I want to hear that thing. I want to keep growing. I, I want to be hungry and humble and learn it as well. So uh, if I need to learn more about the Holy Spirit, I want to listen. If I want to hear if I need to learn more about how to serve my fellow man in social gospel, I want to learn that. So that, that'll that'll keep you for me anyway. It's it's helped me in my interaction with people. It's like oh, I'm going to dig a little bit and see what this person knows. Interesting, really neat. <clears throat> Jake, do you want to just pray uh, for those who are watching, just for that uh, humility and hunger to be able and and open and open eyes, ears, spirit, <laughs> and soul, even just to be able to yeah. uh, hear what the spirit's saying to them, to be able to, and and the courage to be able to take the steps into this. You want to just pray yeah. for us? Yeah. God, we just, we quiet our hearts. God, we, we come to you um, and we, we just want to hear. God, we come with, with open hearts and we want to listen and hear your voice in, in all the things that, that are going on in every issue. God, we just, we just ask that you would silence um we would silence, silence pride, silence, silence the voices that are that are keeping us from from listening, that want us to shut down the conversation, to shut down other people's views, God. And we just ask that um, you would clear the way, give us humility, give us hunger, give us hunger to to know and feel how other people feel, how they how they see the world, how they know um, what's going on. God, and I just, I just ask that you would come in, it, in that hunger and in that, that space of humility, that you would come and feed us, that we wouldn't live off this world alone. We wouldn't just live off the knowledge that other people have or that we have, but God, that we would come back to you and, and we would lay it at the altar, that you would burn up the chaff and, and give us what we need for, for mm -hmm. nutrients and, and sustenance for our school. So Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you would you pour yourself <clears throat> out on us? Um, give us humility. Mm. Awaken us to to the to the spaces and and the conversations and the people that we need to learn from, and and pull us back, pull us back, and, and give us give us the opportunity to listen and to learn, Lord. Mm. We thank you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. That was a lovely time together, gentlemen. <laughs> always, always nice to see you both on the internet. And uh, for those of you guys who have been uh, watching, we thank you for hanging out with us. Brian, if you could just hang here on the line here in just a minute, I got something to chat with you about. Uh, and uh, and Jacob, that was a lovely evening. Thanks Jacob, so much for joining Jacob. us, Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Friends, have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.